there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today is the review of the very first Ink Acquiring Minds members pen. For those of you who aren't members, I put out a poll for just members of the channel to select the next pen I would buy. And you can be a member too for just 99 cents a month. And membership gets you more, well, more me. Since I was using money obtained from their memberships to purchase a pen, I decided that the members should be allowed to choose which pen I would buy. So I put a poll together that listed five pens from which members would vote. Those five pens were a Pilot Custom 74, a Leonardo Momento Zero Magico, a Levin Antique Gold, a Cross Townsend, and an Opus 88 Opera. 41% of the members voted for the Pilot Custom 74. Then I put a poll out for members to select the ink. The choices were a Roshizuku Kanpeki, KWZ Azure No. 5, Pelican Edelstein Topaz, Ackerman Shocking Blue, and Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue. The KWZ Azure No. 5 was the winner with 33% of the vote. Democracy in action. They're coming to get you, Barbara. How did those democratic votes turn out? Well, let's just say that sometimes fountain pen and ink choices shouldn't be left to the masses. Find out why right now. <laughs> And I put up this poll and asked um, your opinion on which pen I should buy with the money that you folks have donated to my channel. And the eyes have it. It was uh, this beautiful pen and it has arrived today. So I thought I'd give you guys an unboxing. And of course, this pen has come from Goulet Pens. And no, I'm not sponsored by Goulet at all. But I have purchased from them a few times. And you always get a sticker, which is really nice. Here we go, Goulet Pens. Yes. And this one was packed with a ridiculous amount of care by Jamelia. Thank you, Jamelia. And the sucker, of course. Let's see what we have. I bought this extra for my own self. This is a rickshaw. And I've admired the rickshaw. This is my Kershaw blade that was donated to me by Crazy Oscar. Thank you, Crazy Oscar. And this feels as plush as it looks on the photos. Let's put a pelican in there as well. And let's put a Leonardo in there as well. Downy, fleecy, soft. Isn't that beautiful? Here's the pen of the hour. A Pilot Custom 74. Um, I like that it is the blue. Of course, I've got it in the medium. And the Pilot sleeve comes off. The Pilot Custom 74. Not only is it gorgeous, it has a Con 70 converter in there. I love that Con 70. I've got one in my Explorer. Let's take a look at the nib. Yeah, that's a beauty. And let's look inside the box to see what else it comes with. You get a standard cartridge from Pilot and you get your use and care guide, of course, with all the different filling instructions and maintenance instructions. Thank you to you Inquiring Minds members. This pen now belongs to me, and I can't wait to start writing with this pen and then do a review just for you. So I think I'm showing a lot of willpower here. Um, I got this pen about a week and a half ago or so, and before I inked it up for the first time, I put out a poll for my members uh, which ink they think I should... Hey, I'm a poet. Which ink they think I should ink this up with for the first time. And I put out a poll 
uh, of four or five different colors and KWZ Azure number five is the ink that won the poll. But I thought while I'm uh, filling this pen that I should talk about the converter that comes with the custom 74 because it is the con 70 and there's a lot of good and bad about um, all of these converters um, of course here's the the one thing that you can use which is a pilot cartridge could be used in that pen uh, this I think it's a con 10 maybe it's a con 20 I can't remember uh, but it's just a little squeeze converter it's not really intended for ink but it came with my pilot e95 s and it's generally for cleaning the pen out so you can put that in the pen and sort of uh, push it in, into some clear water and it aids in cleaning the pen and then there's the universally hated and i'm included in that the con 40 uh, it's the only converter that fits in this pen um, because it's too small for a con 70 uh, and that's why i use a cartridge and fill, refill this cartridge with my own ink uh, for my e95s and that seems to work because the pilot cartridges do take a lot of ink and they're quite resilient but let's talk about the con 70. people have issues with how it fills uh, and how difficult it is to fill and i think one of the issues is and i'm going to link um, a video that uh, brian goulet did uh, shows how to use this con 70 converter uh, and he shows that you should be pushing down on it and releasing quickly like that uh, so that you get the vacuum effect but i think one of the issues is when you put the nib down into the bottle you have to put so much force on this thing to move it that you're jamming your nib uh, into the bottom of the bottle which is not good and so if you try to hold it then you're going to ink all over your hands while you're trying to do this with force because that little piston right there sticks on the inside of this cylinder contrary to popular belief because brian said you can pull these apart these newer ones are glued in place the reason you'd want to get it apart would be to put some silicone grease on that little piston right there to get it to glide a little bit more because it sticks the only way at it is through here so i'm going to try an experiment i'm going to put some silicone grease on the tip of this uh, toothpick and i'm going to try to direct it down into there and avoid my plunger basically extend it like that put some grease on the tip and put it down inside to kind of coat the inside of that chamber with a little bit of silicone grease to try to make that move a little bit easier and there we go i had to do it off camera because it was a little bit too difficult to do in front of the camera uh, but i was able to get enough down in the lower part of that chamber that it now actually moves fairly easily without sticking so now let's put it back in the pen and get our ink so we're going to dip this down into the ink and you can might not be able to see but i'm fairly deep in there now um, and so i'm going to try to hold it into the ink without touching the bottom and you get bubbles and i'm pushing it quickly i've done it about maybe six times right now and i've got a full fill look at that now i can finally write and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen this is the seventh pilot fountain pen that i've reviewed i've reviewed the plumix the 78g the explorer falcon e95s decimo and now this custom 74. i've been universally impressed with the quality of the pens from pilot from the inexpensive plumix to the gold nibs on my e95s and falcon 
I was quite excited when the group of members selected the Custom 74. I'd admired Brian Goulet's Custom 74 in this transparent blue for years, so I was fully expecting another excellent pilot fountain pen experience. My E95S is one of my top three fountain pens, as I stated in my video for Applebaum. And I use this E95S at least once a week, and it's here on my desk next to me at all times. My experience with the Custom 74 has not been what I expected, however. I'll try to explain that after the writing sample. Let's look at the parts and features of this pen first. Overall, it's a medium-sized, slim, cigar-shaped pen with bullet-shaped finials. The pen is made from injection-molded plastic with no signs of gates or seams, and the plastic resin is very high quality. It feels luxurious in the hand and just doesn't feel cheap at all. From the top, we see a domed plastic finial that has a really cool bubble in the middle of it there. Both this and the end finial are glued in place, and this one holds a chromed ring and the pilot ball clip in place. The clip is nicely springy and very usable, and that ball end will allow you to clip it to almost any type of material without snagging. The cap tapers up slightly to a chrome cap ring. The top ring has some slits in it, and the bottom ring has a raised portion that has Custom 74, Pilot, and Made in Japan stamped into it with a couple of stars. Then there's about four millimeters of plastic cap remaining, which tapers down to a very small step down uh, to the barrel. The barrel is mostly straight with a very slight taper towards another chrome ring, which separates the bullet-shaped end finial, which is also hollow. The cap unscrews with one and one quarter turns to reveal a tapering section of smoke gray transparent injection molded plastic, which has a small flare and then a bevel towards the number five size 14 karat gold rhodium plated pilot nib. The section is relatively short, about 18 millimeters, which is fine if you grip your pen closer to the nib. But if you grip further back or have a more spread out grip like I do, then your thumb or your fingers might rest on these threads of this chrome ring. The threads aren't sharp, but they do make a positive bump, which I can feel. Let's take a closer look at this nib. The rhodium plated gold nib has some really nice scroll work around the border and the words Pilot 14K 585, which is the gold content, a number five, which is the pilot size for the nib, and then an M in brackets for medium. Just below the border on the left hand side is a date code, which says P519, which means it was manufactured in May of 2019. And on the right hand side is an oval Namiki PPF hallmark. I'll leave it to the pilot aficionados to tell me what that hallmark means. I mentioned that this was a number five size 14 karat gold nib, but pilot has their own sizes and this just happens to be a number five for them. The Western nib numbering system of five, six, eight, and 10 and so on correspond to the diameter of the feed that they use in millimeters. But the pilot numbering system of three, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, and 50 do not represent any measurement I can find. And it seems to be a pilot nib classification system internal to the company that dates back to the 50s. So if we compare this pilot number five nib with a Western number five nib, like this one here on my Visconti Mirage, you'll see that the pilot number five is slightly bigger. And then if we compare it to a standard number six size Western nib, like this Bach number six on my Leonardo Memento Zero, you'll see it is just slightly smaller than standard. The nib and plastic feed are friction fit and you can pull it out for maintenance and cleaning or replacement. This does void your warranty, however, so proceed at your own risk. And on the back of this plastic feed, you can see the filler hole is further up on the feed than standard, which makes it easier 
uh, to get ink into the pen when your ink levels are low in your bottle. The section unscrews to reveal the included CON70 Pilot Converter, which holds a generous amount of ink, as well as the Pilot CON40 Converter if you're so inclined, or just a pen masochist. The inside of the cap shows a nib sealing sleeve, as well as some ribs molded into the inside of the cap, which grip the end of the pen when it is posted. Really nice little feature. The cap posts deeply and securely, and the cap is light enough that it doesn't unbalance the pen. Unposted, the pen is nicely balanced as well, and plenty long enough to write with. I bought this pen from Goulet Pens for $160 US, and the pen is available in eight colors, including this blue, blue stone, clear, forest green, grenadine, merlot, smoke, and teal. In the same order, I bought this lovely three pen sleeve called a koozie from Rickshaw Bagworks. It's made of rugged canvas on the outside and this plush faux fleece lining. And you can get other variations at Goulet Pens, but the Rickshaw Bagworks website has a dizzying array of pen sleeves, colors and art finishes to match your pen to your favorite artist. You can baby your most precious pens in their own plush beds, or you can make your own custom Rickshaw. Check it out. It's very cool. I'll put a link in the description. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Pilot Custom 74 with a Wingsong 699, a Pilot 78G, a Pilot Falcon, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I must say that Pilot really does know how to post pens and make them well balanced. Of course, the Wingsung 699 is almost a direct copy of the Pilot 823. And both the Falcon and the Custom 74 are 14 karat gold nibs. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Pilot Custom 74. And it has a 14 karat gold medium nib. And the ink today I'm afraid is not the member's choice. It is Iroshizuku Kanpeki. So, a little bit of explanation. <laughs> I filled this pen with the member's choice KWZ Azure number five. It seems some pens and inks just don't like each other. Get out! Now, I love KWZ Azure number no. 5. It's a rich, dark blue, which also smells like vanilla. That's a bonus. You are the home of spring flowers that bloom in the spring. Great ink. I had to get another bottle recently, as both my wife and I are going through it like English tea. This is a cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> but unfortunately, the Pilot 74 didn't like the KWZ. The Azure number no. five is a bit, um, how can I describe it? Yeah, sticky. Yeah, I'm all sticky. You're all red. It seems to be more viscous somehow and doesn't have the free flow of an Orochizuku ink. The pen was skipping and the feed wasn't keeping up. So to make sure that it wasn't the pen's fault, uh, I cleaned it out and filled it with Orochizuku Kanpeki. I know Kanpeki is one of the best behaving inks I've ever used. And when I get a pen that has flow issues, swapping out the ink for Kanpeki is the first thing I do. 
to eliminate the ink as one of the causes of the problem. Switching to Compeki for the Pilot Custom 74 certainly solved the flow issues, but the nib still has a bit of an issue. More on that in a moment. First, here are some close matches to Compeki from Inkswatch.com. And while you're looking at that, we will look the wetness. This is nicely wet now. The nib is smooth with just a hint of feedback on the page. And as to line variation, uh, the nib has some really nice bounce to it. So if you like bounce in your nib, then this nib would be perfect for you. It's not flex by any means, but there's no pressure and there's some good amount of pressure. You can see you get some really nice line variation. It gets very wet. It's by no means as flexible as my Pilot Falcon, uh, but if you like a little bounce, that one's very nice. This line is 0.5 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing. Yeah, it's too scratchy to even try digging up the page. And some quick writing. Yeah, no flow issues anymore. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Okay, this was a very difficult evaluation. I have to put aside my preconceptions and my expectations about this pen and judge it solely on my empirical observations and direct experiences in writing with this pen for a couple of weeks now. You see, I've wanted this pen for a long time. It has been in my cart on Goulet pens a number of times over the last year or more. My expectations were high. After my experiences of my Pilot E95S, which is my first gold nib fountain pen, and I simply adore this pen. And my other pilots, from the Plumix to the Falcon to the Explorer, I expected a typical, excellent, exceptional experience with the Pilot Custom 74. The one exception to my love of Pilot so far has been the Pilot Metropolitan. I cannot get myself to like the Metro no matter how popular it is. Uh, sorry, Metro fans, but this sharp bump on the Metro is just a deal breaker for me. But now the Metro has company because much as I have tried, I cannot like this Pilot 74. Uh, so I'll try to explain that. But I have to talk about what is fantastic about this pen to start, so I'm not being misunderstood. This is a great fountain pen. It is top pilot quality, there's no question. It's superbly made. The injection molded resin is clear, seamless, and expertly finished. The pen is gorgeous. Really, it is gorgeous. The pen is extremely well balanced, both posted and unposted. Typical of pilot. It has a bouncy, beautiful 14 karat gold nib, and the Con 70 uh, converter, even though people do have issues with it, it takes a lot of ink and works very well once you get the hang of filling it. And I like the Con 70. I have one in my Explorer as well that I use all the time. The price of this pen is certainly good for your first gold nib fountain pen, and it is justly recommended as such. So for many users, this will be a top pen. For me, it's not. 
though my quarrels with this pen are purely subjective. And when it comes down to it, that's what it's all about, isn't it? As long as a pen performs properly, is well made, has longevity and manufacturer and dealer support, it is a good buy subject to how it feels in your hand when you're right. This pen fulfills all of those criteria for me, except how it feels in the hand when I write with it, which is key. I did have some flow issues with it, but I solved that with the choice of ink. I also had some slight issues with baby's bottom. You might be able to see it's doing it a bit right there as well. When I wrote the word Western, the top of my W was missing. It does that randomly to me. So there's a, just a touch of baby's bottom on that nib, but it's nothing I can't handle with 30 seconds of micromesh. The point is I can't really control this pen with my hand. The balance is okay, but it's the combination of the narrow body, the short narrow section, and a small nib that doesn't seem to allow me to control my cursive writing. I thought to myself that I was just getting lazy with my cursive writing, but the more I wrote with the Custom 74, the more frustrated I got with my writing to the point that I thought my handwriting had actually regressed. Then I would write with my Leonardo or pick up Jack's Schaefer Legacy 2, or even my El Cheapo Kaigaloo 356 with the long blade Kaigaloo nib and the flare. comes back. I kept writing with the Custom 74 in my journal regularly over the last week and a half or two weeks until I almost hated to pick up the pen again. So this is the weirdest evaluation I've done on a fountain pen since I started, I think. I love everything about this pen, but how it feels in my hand and how my writing deteriorates when I write with it. It really proves to me how very subjective all of this is. People love the Metropolitan and collect them like fanatics. Others love the Lamy Safari and have every color ever made in their collections. Others rave about the Lamy 2000 as one of the greatest fountain pens ever made. I can't write with any of those pens. I sold my Lamy 2K. I just keep my Lamy Safari and my Pilot Metropolitan for size comparisons because everybody knows them. And this Pilot Custom 74 will probably be for sale very quickly because I won't be writing with it. I know this is a long-winded likes and dislikes, but this experience with the Custom 74 has been a good experience for me in one respect. Now I really want a Pilot 823 vacuum filler. I'm convinced that the issue with the 74 is the size and shape of the section, the barrel, and the nib. Now the 823 is very close in dimension to the Wingsung 699 and I love the way this pen fits in my hand. If the size 15 Pilot nib on the Custom 823 is as soft and bouncy as the one on this Custom 74, then the 823 might be the perfect Pilot for my hand. I put off getting one for a long time because they're so bloody expensive and they only come into yucky colors, smoke amber and smoke gray. Now, if they had one in this gorgeous transparent blue, I'd be all over it like a fat kid on an M&M. <laughs> Perhaps I can swap the cap and the body to the 823. Transplant my head onto another body. Sacrilege, you say? Anyway, perhaps the sale of this Custom 74 can help finance a Custom 823 one day, and this pen will end up in a hand that appreciates it for its beauty and its quality. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget, you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis and badges too. Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges.
I don't have to show you any stinking bushes. And that just leaves it for me to say. Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.